Hi, I'm Kathleen McDonald, and I'm with News Now. Today we're at Beach Street Center to interview Bob Young, a World War II veteran, approaching his 100th birthday. I'm here with Bob Upton, the Veteran Services Officer of Belmont. Thank you very much. It's great having you guys here today. I really sincerely appreciate the coverage of Belmont Media of the monthly Veterans Coffee Hour for Belmont Veterans. It's always a good time here for the coffee hour. It's free coffee, free donuts, of course, but it's really a great time to get the uh, uh, veterans together uh, for the social hour. Today's a very special day, and then we have United States Navy veteran, World War II Navy veteran, Robert Young. On August 8th, his birthday, he'll be 100 years old. He's here today, and all of his friends from the coffee hour, his wife Joan, of course, brought him here today. And it's just a very special time to be here with all these guys on this special occasion and uh, it's nice to have Bob at 100 years old being, being with us to celebrate that special birthday for him. So thank you very much for covering this and um, feel free to stay as long as you like. Thank you, thank you very much. I have a situation that is called a shock and tooth disease type of problem and it, it I, I do have crippled hands, and I got to be very careful whenever we have a Pledge of Allegiance, because I can, I got a damn good grip, but I've lost muscles that, break, that oppose the grip, so I, I really can't get my hands straightened out the way they should. And the problem I really got to worry about is what happens to the thumb. Just make damn sure that it doesn't get here. <laughs> hey, Bob, you served in the Navy during World War II. Where did you serve? Uh, Central Pacific uh, would generally be uh, the area referred to. It. But it was it started out in Tarawa, Kwajalein, Anawetok, Saipan, Tinian. Iwo Jima and uh, Okinawa, where we finally got word to head back to the, to the States. And the ship is to be overhauled and prepared for the invasion of Japan proper. What ship were you aboard? Uh, you, this one I have my hat, USS Sederstrom. A destroyer escort actually is about half the, half the size of a regular fleet destroyer. And it was designed primarily for convoy duty. Now, wouldn't you think that here I was born and brought up on the coast of Maine, that I'd get assigned to Atlantic ship? No, they sent me over to the Pacific, and I, which they did me a favor because the Pacific Ocean was relatively calm compared to the Atlantic. But in any event, uh, at Okinawa, we got word to head back to uh, Seattle, Seattle in the States for overhaul. And while I was home on leave, while the war ended, so I never did go back to sea again in the Navy. So, Bob, I take a little bit of risk here by asking you, what did you do in the Navy? Well, I was, I, well, I, I really had a good deal uh, as a radioman. Instead of standing watch on deck, I was in the radio shack all the time, and we had to uh, copy Morse code continuously all the time. Remember, during World War II, uh, now I was in high school when it started, but there were over 14 million young men and women who served uh, in military forces during World War II. Wow, that's quite a crowd, 14 million. But now we've had these subsequent wars and the nation has not been behind those servicemen that served in those situations, uh, North Korea and what have you. And they deserve a lot more accolades than we World War II guys. We had everybody in the service or behind us anyway, and that's not the case with Vietnam and North Korea or what have you. So the one that really deserved praise are those who served in warfare subsequent or following up after World War II. They're the ones that deserve our accolades. I'm here with Bob Young, a World War II veteran who's approaching his 100th birthday. How are you feeling today? 
Well, I'm I'm very uh, elated over the fact that uh, they're paying particular attention to me. A little premature, but uh, anyway, it's going to be a, a, a most enjoyable memory for me as far as I'm concerned. That's wonderful. Um, looking back on your service, what led you to enlist or to join or were you drafted? I'm sorry, what? What led you to join the military? Well, primarily because it was World War II and uh, I was a senior in high school when the war started, December 7th, 1941. And everybody that was graduating was enlisted in, in the military. If they weren't doing that, then they're going to cast the, mili uh, the other military schools so to get a commission, whatever you. So I decided that uh, I felt that I, I loved being at sea, uh, having been born and brought up on the coast of Maine. So uh, I thought, well, I'm going to join. I joined the Navy, and that's what I did do. But I, uh, a friend and I went to Portland, Maine, to enlist, and we find out. They weren't taken anymore in the Navy at that point, so, uh, oh, but I managed to figure out a way to do it, so I ended up in the Navy. The funny thing is that here I am, born and brought up on the coast of Maine, and the Navy assigns me to a ship out of San Francisco. <laughs> <laughs> My goodness. Um, looking at all your time in the service, has there been any value or any part that has changed the way you live your life? Any lesson that you're really grateful for? The one, I'm, uh, one I can tell you that will surprise you is that one thing that happened when I was in boot camp, which is basic training in Newport, Rhode Island, I got assigned to a unit that uh, there were three of us of this group of about 40 or 50 uh, Navy personnel there on the island. There were three of us who were assigned as, as us, no, actually nine, assigned as messengers and, and barracks guards. And our job, uh, two of us every morning and, and every evening would be assigned to march with the, the base band up in front of the war college and either to raise or lower the colors of the, fl of the flag. And I, I really enjoyed that in thoroughly and uh, remembered it specifically. Otherwise, uh, there were a lot of things that happened, too many to recite, starting uh, with uh, Tarao and ending with Okinawa. So, and I was out there all during that period of time on board the ship, and we were in various battles here and there. Uh, but I enjoyed it out at sea, I really did. That's absolutely wonderful. Now, looking at the fact we're approaching a major milestone, many people don't get to experience your 100th birthday. Out of your 100 years, well, soon to be 100 years of life, what is something that you wish you knew sooner or something you're glad to know now? Something, what was that again? Something you wish you knew sooner, maybe a lesson, an idea, anything about life that you're glad you've learned now, today, that you think other people should learn. Well, of course, this, this affair today was a really the uh, highlight for my life and my old age. Here I am, uh, almost 100 years old, will be in a short time. And uh, th thankfully, some of the veterans uh, subsequent to World War II are still around. There's a couple of World War II fellows there as well. But my ranks, uh, the ranks of World War II veterans is diminishing <laughs> rather rapidly. And uh, one day it's going to be happy, uh, going to happen to me, and uh, uh, I, won't, I won't be around anymore. But you never can tell uh, when you, when you get to be in a spiritual form, or maybe I will look down once in a while and see how the Red Sox are doing. <laughs> <laughs> one of the things of being grateful for really is uh, the principal one is my wife, and uh, she has just been wonderful to me. What I remember particularly, and there's one thing I did uh, subsequent to World War II, I was incidental in getting uh, uh, the, the crew together, locating, locating them and so forth, and uh, was the leader, more or less, of having reunions each year. We had about, about 35 reunions, and then all of a sudden 
I realized there's only about three or four of me left. So we, <laughs> we had a wonderful time though at those various reunions and heard a lot of tall tales <laughs> about how we all by ourselves won World War II. <laughs> but the, obviously that's not the situation at all. But uh, it was a lot of fun to get together with these guys and find out how well they did in life after they got out of the, after the end of World War II and after they'd all got out of the military life and headed back into civilian life. So uh, that, that, that basically is what, what happened to me, of course. I, uh, I got out of uh, the Navy and uh, went to the college on the GI Bill. That was wonderful. And from there on, I was pretty much on my own. Well, I came to Boston and uh, applied for and got a job at uh, John Hancock Insurance Company. You know the big, the, excuse me, the big glass tower building in town? Yeah. I had an office on the southeast corner of the 28th level. It was a 50-story building. And I could see Blue Hills, I could see Boston Harbor, to see Logan Airport. I kind of had had myself as an unofficial harbor master. <laughs> and come to find out, I told that just as a story, and somebody put into my history that I was a, a harbor master. And I wasn't. <laughs> so anyway, uh, since uh, having moved down to Boston, I got to know, uh, I got to marry my wife, and we've been married for 65 years. How about that, huh? <laughs> and uh, we do have a son who's, uh, geez, I think, I think now he's 62. We, were, we, we did not produce uh, big families, in my case, and my son either. He has a, 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 a daughter, my granddaughter. So what happened was that... Uh, I um, finished uh, college, was home, and visited by a f family friend who lives in Sh lived in Sharon. Mm -hmm. And he told me that uh, he ought to come down. To, I should come down to Boston because uh, he he worked at John Hancock Insurance Company. And he said, "What well, they're hiring? You ought to come down." So I did. I had no intention of staying there, but they kept giving me raises, so I <laughs> so I stayed. And, and retired from there, and uh, have, have lived here in uh, Belmont ever since. So here I am, a, 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 a state of Mainer, who left there 65 years ago, but I still uh, love my hometown back there and all the good friends that I had. State of Maine, so to speak. Some people refer to us as maniacs, though. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, but uh, Belmont uh, got involved in various affairs here, particularly a town meeting member and what have you. So it was a lovely town to to have uh, devoted many, most of my life here, 65 years. So that's my story. <laughs> if you want to get more details, well, I'll, let you, I'll get you a copy of my my book I wrote about World War II. You wrote a book? Yeah. Could you please tell us the name of your book? From Maine, M-A-I-N-E, to the Bounding Maine. You ever heard of the Bounding Maine, M-A-I-N? That really basically means the, the ocean. Mm. So that's the way it was with me. I was from Maine, M-A-I-N-E, mm -hmm. and ended up on the Bounding Maine. Uh, the Pacific Ocean was well named because it was uh, relatively calm. Oh, once in a while we would get run into a typhoon out there, and it really got rough. And uh, a lot of the guys aboard ship would get seasick. Gee, I was lucky. I never did. I never got seasick. Probably because of the time I spent on the coast of Maine <laughs> before I went in the Navy, so... But being at sea without getting seasick, uh, when you looked at some of the guys <laughs> that were sick, you say, oh. So I was lucky in that regard, yeah. 
Thank you so much for your service and for your time. Happy early birthday. Oh, thank and you very much, dear. Very I'm very glad I got to interview a husband, veteran, and author, know. and harbor master. I'm Kathleen McDonald, and this was News Now. Until next time.